So let's take a quick look at the Episoft transact activities that are now available for UiPath. So what I've done is I've already gone to UiPath Go, their marketplace, and downloaded the FSOF Transact package. And you can simply upload that package here in the Manage Packages button on the toolbar here. So I have already uh, downloaded this to be able to um, access it and for it to be available in my activities panel. And what I've done is I've built just a, a simple flowchart here uh, using the Transact activities. Now, once we've uploaded the package, um, all I have to do to be able to locate the um, transact activities is to do a quick search at this toolbar for FSOft or Transact, or I can access it through the Integrations tab here. So I'm just gonna do a quick search for FSOft, and I can see here that within the Integrations uh, tab, I've got a list of activities under FSOft Transact that are available for me to drag and drop into my Studio Canvas. Uh, to incorporate into an existing robotic workflow. So if I open up this folder watch and claim process for each activity that I created, uh, what I've done is built a simple workflow that's going to um, allow me to watch a folder. Uh, anytime new documents are placed into the folder, automatically uh, grab them, process them through a batch class that I've defined within a transact server that I'll point to, and then extract the field information from that document. Um, so to start off, what you have to do is you have to drag and drop the transact scope um, into your uh, little workflow canvas. And this is where you'd configure the connection uh, specifically for your transact server. Uh, so in this case, I'm connecting to a server, which I'll show you the projects for in just a moment. And within this transact scope activity, uh, what I'm gonna show is how I will uh, extract fields uh, for uh, the purposes of you know, downstream uh, use within this particular application or within another application. So we've drag and drop the extract fields activity. And here is where I'll actually define information from uh, where I want to uh, pull the information, what I want to do with the information. Uh, what I've done is by selecting this drop down list, you can see all of the projects that are available as a part of the batch class that you defined earlier in the transact scope activity. Uh, so in this case, I'm gonna click on an insurance claim processing. And for testing purposes, I'm just gonna manually define the file um, that I want it to process. Uh, I have a couple of sample insurance claim documents um, located in a folder, so we're just gonna test one of those. Uh, within a production environment, what we would do is uh, simply create a variable that points at that location so that anytime documents appear, maybe if an end user were to scan something into a folder, it would automatically grab that information. And then what I've done is just added a little uh, for each activity that's going to write a line um, within the output that will identify all of the fields. Uh, so I've created a variable uh, where in the fields that we're extracting as a part of this batch class um, will be defined as fields and in our output will test to make sure that we're grabbing the information. Um, so you can see here where it's configured within this canvas or here on the right hand panel uh, to define the properties of the activity. So there's a few different options for now, we're just gonna focus on extracting fields. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this, uh, see what kind of output we get. And as that automatically minimizes, I'm gonna open up my uh, batch class management uh, interface here for the server that I connected to, uh, that I configured for the activity to point to within UiPath. And this is the particular project that, I'm def that I've defined um, to run the documents through. So I'm going to open up this insurance claim process. Oops, and let me down minimize that since it did finish processing. We'll hop back there in a minute. Uh, this is the insurance claim process uh, uh, project that I defined. Um, I only have one document type here defined as a part of this particular project, um, but maybe in a production environment, you've got you know 50 different document types with multiple fields from each one, and the uh, activity is just triggering uh, documents to run through this particular batch class. So I've got the one document type, and within that document type, uh, I'm looking for four different index fields, uh, a claim number, a date, a last name, and a policy number within this claim file. So I've configured this project in Transact, and what's gonna happen in UiPath is it's gonna run the sample document that we've defined through that project. And if I click on the output button here at the bottom left-hand corner of the page, it's gonna open up the output window um, from the doc here. 
and let's see if we can open it up again. There we go. Um, and I can see here that based on this activity, I can figure to write a simple line identifying those fields that we trained as an argument. Uh, I've got here, uh, the date has been defined, the policy number has de been defined, um, the claim number was found, and the last name was found from this particular document. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull open uh, this particular uh, document, make sure the information was grabbed as we expected it to be grabbed. Uh, so let's see here, I've got a claim appeal form. Um, I've got the date. I've got the policy number, the claim number, and the last name. And I believe all of that information was correct here in the output as well. So that's just a quick sneak peek of uh, one of the available activities uh, within the UiPath Studio now for FSOF Transact uh, to show how we can uh, create document-aware and data-enabled um, RPA workflows very easily, very simply uh, within this uh, very easy-to-use uh, drag-and-drop studio. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, reach out to sales at fsoft.com uh, if you have any additional questions or you'd like to learn a little bit more about how you can incorporate this type of functionality into your existing workflows.